All right, let's do another fun problem, which is looking at what operations are non-regular languages closed under. So it is pretty easy to show that regular languages are closed under all four of these, union, intersection, complement, and star, but what are non-regular languages closed under? So the way that we should look at this is what does it mean to be closed under a particular operation? So if the operation is, let's just say, a plus with a circle around it, then if uh, L1 and L2 are non-regular languages, then L1 with the uh, applying the operation between L1 and L2 is also not regular. So in English, if I have two non-regular languages, is it always the case that their union is also non-regular and similarly for the other ones? But for complement, if it's, it's only for one language, it's not for two. And actually the same thing for star. So what are these uh, operations are regular non-regular languages closed under? So the way that I would like to look at this is to consider complement first. So let's think about that. So let's address complement. So let's let L1 be a non-regular language. So is it always the case, is it always the case that L1 is non-regular? Is it always true? Or is it sometimes that it, that it is regular? So let's suppose that L1 complement is regular, then closure under complement for regular languages says that the complement of L1 complement, so if I apply the complement operation again, is also regular, because we know that regular languages are, in fact, closed under complement. Well, here, this actually is equal to L1, because if I apply the complement operation twice, I get the original language. Well, the original language we assume to be non-regular, which is a contradiction. So it is not the case that um, L1 bar is sometimes regular, so therefore, uh, L1 bar is always non-regular. And so we can check off and say, yeah, they are closed under complement. But this actually allows us to answer one and two. So let's do union. So if I have L1 and L2 non-regular languages, is it always the case that L1 union L2 is uh, non-regular? Or is it sometimes regular? Well, by the previous one that we just did for complement, if L1 is non-regular and L2 is just the complement of L1, then uh, L2 is also non-regular. But this actually shows that L1 union L2, which is just the same thing as L1 union the complement of itself, well, any language union the complement of itself is sigma star i.e. all the, so all strings. 
But we know that this is regular because we did a video about it, and namely, it's just a single state DFA for all A in sigma. I just have a self loop on a single state. And in fact, we can do intersection in very similar ways. So if we if we let L1 be a non-regular language and L2 to be the complement of L1, then uh, L1 intersection L2, which is the same thing as L1 intersection with its complement, well, a language intersection with its complement, there's no string that can begin both at the same time well, this is just the empty set. And again, we've done a video about this already where we could just make a single state DFA that has no accepting states and it's just, it's the same DFA, but just the complement of it. Cool. Well, let's actually try to do the fourth one, which is star. So remember what star means. It means applying concatenation over and over and over as many times as we want. So if we have L1 be a, um, I should say is, if it, L1 is a non-regular language, then is L1 star always non-regular? So we can't really apply the same logic that we did before. But let's actually think about a very simple example. So we actually have shown before in another video that if L1, I shouldn't use a different language name. So if X is a non-empty language, with at least one non-empty string, then x star is infinite. And you can actually see why, because if x has a string in it somewhere, let's just say like an a or something, then the star operation is going to have infinitely many strings, which is just that string concatenated every integer number of times, every positive integer number of times or, or zero. So it's going to uh, be an infinite language in that case. So why should we care about this? Well, a really easy way to show that it is not closed under star is to consider this language, which uh, we will prove is non-regular in a, a future video, which is 0 to the n squared, where n is at least 0. And I'll just tell you right now, L1 is not regular. And why do we care about this? Well, note that 0, the string 0, is in L1 because it is a perfect square, uh, namely one is a perfect square. So the length, uh, the string of length one, which is just a single zero is in the language L1. But then that means that in L1 star, uh, all the strings zero, 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 et cetera, are all in L1 star. Because we can just repeat this string as many times as we want. And in fact, the empty string is in there too. So if the, the alphabet, which is sigma in this case, is just a single zero, just the character zero, then this means that L1 star must be equal to sigma star because 
sigma star is just the set of uh, all strings with which is just all zeros. Well, that's what L1 star is in this case. It has all zeros in it, regardless of what the other strings are, because they're the string with exactly one zero is in there. But this is regular because we just did it in a previous. It actually, for a union, we showed that it was regular and in the other video. So this means that L1 is non-regular, the original language and L1 star is regular because we just proved, we just gave an example of where we have a non-regular language and the star of it is regular. So what we can do is, is say that it's not closed under union, it is not closed under com uh, intersection, and it's not closed under star. And these are some basic examples of, of properties that non-regular languages are either closed under or not closed under.